at the morning. Alekuye. I speak for the good people of Shomolu Federal Constituency. I am from Lagos State. And by God's grace, I'm the chairman of this committee. Honorable colleagues, the committee, your committee, did a letter dated 13th of November to this agency, this college, demanding for information on the sale of two Bell 206 helicopters, L4BZB and BZC M2061 L4. These helicopters were newly purchased helicopters by the federal government for the use of the college. And to the chagrin of Nigerians, the college sold these two helicopters to private individuals. Despite requests sent to them by some security agencies, your committee demanded from them, from the college, to furnish the following information. The FEC approval for the sale of the helicopters, Minister of Aviation's approval for the sale of aviation, the bid received from interested parties, evidence of qualification of eventual buyers, receipt of payments made to the Treasury. All these have been sent to your respective offices in a file. We ask for the full valuation report, the transaction documents, the purchase agreements, and all of that. In response, the college sent in some things, some documents that did not fully satisfy the requests of your committee. The committee therefore requested for further information through another letter, and then more information was submitted. I am going to allow the college to now speak to the allegation of the legal sale or the improper sale of this helicopter. And uh, before we do that, um, just a few more Do so in a fair. Amen. This is for the college. As I have said earlier on, I took over the position of acting director actually January 18th of this year, but I have with me two of my staff who were really in the helicopter issue at that time, other the former chief executive. They are Ibrahim Ise, who is the head quality assurance of the college, and Ibrahim Messi who is the head of procurement of the college. 
they are in a better position to present what actually the situation is. If you permit me, I will call on them to brief the Honorable Chairman and his member on the transaction concerning these two helicopters, sir. Thank you, sir. You didn't have handing over notes? Were these issues that were were not reflected? These issues were not reflected in the handed over notes? This handed over to me. So okay. we are still going okay. through the okay. they can hand over. Let them hand over to you on the moon. We don't care about that. What we are asking... The, the, the helicopters had been sold even long time before the hand over That's not the question. Were these sales reflected in the handing over notes? No, sir. Mr. 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 Chairman. We were not involved. It's, just, it's, it's okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Deeply sorry, sir. Yes, it's okay. You have a phone. Let me advise you, because this committee is not um, here to witch hunt or embarrass anyone. And don't take it as if uh, you have been uh, proven um, guilty of anything. Whatever you don't know, beg Mr. Chairman, take excuse from him, take notes and records that you will provide information. And the way I can see, you are not even prepared to answer any question here. Because everything that my dearest brother, honorable colleague, just asked you, you were still even turning to um, uh, the people by uh, my, my dearest brothers by your right, if they can confirm yes or not. If you have not gone through your handover notes, this world will not end tomorrow. You still have the opportunity. But if there is any time before this committee, it is proved that you got a handover note, and inside that handover note, all the questions we're asking you here are there. You should know the implication, because you are speaking on that oath. That is the okay. uh, five penny I can, I can lend you, sir. I started acting last year. Am I right? December. Who has been signing this uh, correspondence? Yes. Whose name is S.U.D. Maigana? You are the one. Signing for the registrar. Under, you are the registrar. For that period? No, what I'm saying, he assumed office in December. Mm. Am I right? Mm. This, uh, this letter sent to us was signed, was sent in 5th February. Yes, February. Yes, Am I right? Yes, That's under your own leadership. Yes, and you say you are not aware of the case. You cannot give a brief. No, it's not that. Oh, it's not in your handing over that you cannot ask documents, these sensitive documents coming out from your uh, from the institution without making findings whether it's in your handing over not hand over not or not. I'm sorry, sir, that, as I have said. Please, Mr. Chairman, you get finished the whole exercise. That is why I brought the people who were involved. I was not actually involved in the helicopter issue. That is why I pointed out that they will speak on behalf of the college because they were involved. I wasn't involved. I was not the chief and they came from the He knows everything that is going on. Our current report. Because when you got on board, even if you have not gone through the handing over notes, at least you know the petition you are coming to face. You would have searched for all the necessary information that you need. And uh, if there is need for you to ask any question from your men, it's just for you to just ask them, we are, who will be asking you? We are not asking them. So if there's any information you need from them, you can just uh, bend and get the information. And we know it's going to be a reported speech. We are not the person there at that period. Uh, left and right. So uh, uh, this is my first time, sir. Uh, so that is why I'm sorry for whatever. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Possible enough. Because since you assumed office, this matter has been occurring. 
And I'm very sure that the registrar, before he replied to those requests for information from the committee, he must have taken permission from you. And if I were in your shoes, I would have asked for brief. What you have done is quite irresponsible as a leader and it casts up as passion on your capacity to sit on that seat. However, that is a question for another day. Okay. If it is your, excuse me, yes. please off your mic there. Now, if it is your choice, because you are not fully briefed of the matter you want your officers to speak, will permit, will permit them. However, be aware that whatever they say is binding on you. It is what you have said to us. All right? So that's the position. So we permit you to choose the way you want to go. I respond to correspondences. With the, with, I respond to correspondences. I, I said as the registrar of the college, I respond to correspondences. But uh, I think the first letter that was sent to the college was around July, which was signed by the former rector. He replied that letter. Another letter was sent, I think September, which he forwarded those documents. Then the last letter that came, which we forwarded still another set of documents. All this, but the people who conducted the issue of the helicopter is the head of quality assurance and the head of uh, procurement unit, because this is auction. As the registrar, I'm not a member of the uh, boarding uh, committee for the college, so I don't know much about it. The head of quality and the head of procurement are the people directly in charge of this uh, exercise. Thank you very much, sir. They are in a better position to see what happened. So helicopters. So that at, for, since from 2013, that's uh, during the time of Captain Chinyere Kalu, decided that uh, for the college to start the helicopter flight training, which is part of the recommendations of the Paul DK committee, after the crashes of 2005 and 2006, the option available to the college was to sell the Bell helicopters. And then when you sell the Bell helicopters, the funding that we get from the selling of the Bell helicopters will be used to procure piston up initial helicopters so that that training will commence. The then Minister of Aviation, when she saw the helicopters, said, no, the college could lease the helicopters instead of selling them while government will look for funding to provide that Funding did not come until uh, the tenure of Captain Kalu and uh, then Minister uh, Odua was completed. Then in 2018, when Captain Abdul Salami Mohammed was appointed as director, chief executive of the college, he set up a committee on helicopter flight training. And that committee reviewed everything that was on ground for commencement of the helicopter flight training. At the end of the day, the committee recommended the disposal of the Bell helicopters in order for the college to purchase piston up initial helicopters to commence that helicopter training as the fastest way the college can commence helicopter training. These recommendations was accepted by the director and then in 2019, he wrote the Ministry of Aviation seeking for approval to dispose of the helicopters, the Bell helicopters, and use the proceeds of the sale of the Bell helicopters to buy piston helicopters. In 2019, uh, I think it's part of the documents that were provided, in 2019, the ministry granted approval to the college for that, but to refer to the aircraft blue book 
for guidance on the sale of the helicopter as to the value. And then the college was to follow section 56.1 of the Public Procurement Act to, for the disposal. So, it, and when the college could not do that, the college still wrote to the ministry requesting that the ministry should give a disposal value for the helicopter or set up a committee comprising Ministry of Works and NCAA. Yes, we have all the letters that we are talking about, yes. So uh, when the college did not receive a response, because for you to dispose, the, that part of the procurement asset, you must get an independent evaluator so that you will get what should be the disposal value for that particular item or public property that we want to dispose. Then in 2022, the college rose the ministry. And that was during the tenure of Captain Alkali Modibo, because Captain Abdul Salami Mohammed's tenure ended in 2021. The ministry did not give us a response. And then in 2023, the college wrote first reminder and second reminder. It was after the second reminder that the ministry in March 2023 granted approval for the college to invite a licensed auctioneer for the disposal of the helicopters, as well as also to get them valued. And in line with government processes for disposal of such, the college has the people that are authorized to give us the value for the disposal is the Ministry of Works. So the college also wrote the Ministry of Works to seek for them to provide the disposal value for those helicopters. And the Ministry of Works in March wrote the college providing the value the reserve value for the disposal of the helicopters. And the reserve value set by the Ministry of Works in their letter set $600,000 as the reserve price for the sale of the helicopters. And from then, the college then in line with the recommendations of the ministry, the college engaged the services of a auctioneer, a licensed auctioneer, to handle the disposal of the helicopters. The licensed auctioneer, Mrs. Strange Small Nigeria Limited, was appointed. And then uh, Mrs. Strange Small Nigeria Limited advertised for the disposal of the helicopters in two dailies. And then on the 24th of May, they handled the auction of the helicopters. The two helicopters at the end of the auction were sold uh, based on the accepted uh, prices that were, were sold to Premier Jet Services and who bidded for one of the helicopters at $650,000, and Blue Horn Aviation, who bidded $550,000 for the helicopters. The amount utilized from the sale of the helicopters was then paid into the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federal Government of Nigeria. Alex. I so submit, sir. Okay, what did you say? By Blue Horn. Uh, the deputy chairman, members of the committee, once again, good afternoon. Uh, both the quality and the procurement have a particular role. So I'm now speaking based on the role I played in the sale of the Bell, two Bell helicopters. Uh, 
as the head of procurement. All those approvals that the head of the quality assurance mentioned were duly received by the college from the Minister of Aviation. That is the approval to auction the two Bell helicopters. The, then it reached a stage when the time comes for the auction, I advise the then Rector Chief Executive that we should involve an auctioneer looking at the value of those two Bell helicopters. Then we appointed an auctioneer, Tresmo. The base, uh, as instructed by the Federal Ministry of Aviation and Technology, that aerospace, I mean, that uh, we have to look at the book value of those two helicopters. A memo was sent from the Ministry of Aviation. A memo was sent from the Ministry of Aviation to the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing for the valuation of these two Bell helicopters, which they sent the report to the Ministry of Aviation. At a point, the Ministry of Aviation took over the, uh, the activities, that is the sales, because of the threshold. So when the Federal Ministry of Works sent down the evaluation report to the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace, then it was routed to the, to the then rector, Captain Alcali Modibo, that approval had been granted for this, for the sale, for the disposal of these two Bell helicopters. It was at that stage that we appointed Tresmo, uh, a licensed auctioneer. We look at it, whether he has confirmed with the eligibility requirements, whether he have all the licenses for him to do those transactions. After the due diligence, we now gave him an appointment, uh, an appointment and award letter for him to commence the auctioning of the two Bell helicopters. I want to correct the value for the disposal value. I think the boss I see here may likely to concur. The other Bell helicopter was sold at $605,000. Not six fifty. It's six o five. The one sold for Premier Jet dollars. And then the other one was sold at five hundred and ninety five. Five nine five thousand. Three zero zero thousand dollars. So please, uh, I just want to correct the figure that came from the. It was an error. But no, it's, it's, it's not. It's not an error. We'll get the document that he's uh, reading yes, his sir. own uh, price from. Please, we need that document because we also have other prices. Yes. Then we'll like also them. have the document that you are reading from your own price, because you can't say it's a mistake while he's reading it from a document. So we we'll need those documents from the quality assurance and the one you have at the procurement as well. Thank yes. you. Chairman, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, Deputy Chairman, the Secretariat, Honorable Colleagues, our guests, uh, Mayor Vice Marshal Ujua, are retired, and I represent the good people of Ikiti State. I might have some few questions for you. First of all, you are aware, you talked about 2005 report by then uh, later retired airship manager for DK that recommended for you to have an helicopter in, in CAT. What's the purpose of the helicopter then? What was he, what was he supposed to be? Uh, you see, one no, no, from the okay, uh, okay, let me let me let me let me ask my questions. Yeah, let me ask my questions. So let me let me let me ask let me ask all my questions at once, sir. Because I have a series of them. First of all, what 
what was the role that that helicopter was supposed to be playing in INCAT as at the time that it was purchased. And then uh, the Bell 206 held four helicopters. Is it a single crew or a dual crew helicopter? Because you're talking about a jet and pristine helicopter for training. Does it matter whether it's a jet or a pristine helicopter if it's for training? Uh, then you now said this helicopter was, did you, how long was the helicopter used in that place? What was it used for? How many hours has it flown before it was finally disposed of? And when you are recommending for the sales of this aircraft, what was the option of the helicopter you intend to purchase? Because we didn't mention it anywhere, that we are supposed to dispose of this and we are supposed to buy this particular helicopter. You say you are supposed to dispose of it because it's a jet engine and you needed to buy a, a, a piston engine. So why do you want to translate from a jet engine to a piston engine? And what kind of engine, what kind of helicopter do you intend to buy with the proceeds of this uh, helicopter? After we have resolved this one, then maybe I will be able to ask my further questions. Uh, let's take a uh, Then we'll take uh, a uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. um, the Deputy Chairman. One of the reasons why you want to sell this aircraft is to make a replacement. Were you able to make that replacement by another aircraft? Secondly, what was the cost of procuring that aircraft as at the time it was purchased? And the, why did you sell it at the cost of, um, what you said, 605 and um, 595? And again, in all sincerity, this fund you said, was it actually utilized? Thank you very much by uh, Honorable Shinkapi. After listening to the submission by the Director of Procurement, he said the money has been paid after the auction, the money say, is it some percentage paid to the TSA and the percentage paid to the school uh, or the college account or what? We wanted to know that one. Thank you. Um, the the boss or the accountant. Do you have the evidence of remittance for the payment of the helicopters into the consolidated uh, revenue account? Okay, can you read the amount that was paid? 556 million. And 56 million. Million. No, in dollars or in? No, in Naira. In Naira. In Naira, yes. Equivalent, what is the exchange equivalent? You say 550. 556 million. Million, yes. 200,000 Naira only. 200,000 Naira. Yes. So in, in, in dollar amount, how much exchange? Then how much was it? No, we use the official exchange rate. That yes, time. then how much of the official that you use? What is the total in dollars? Because in your report, it's coming in, in dollars. So how much is it in dollars with you there? It's 463 Naira. Naira? 463 Naira. Is per it Naira or dollar? Per dollar. Okay, per convert it. Tell us how much in dollars. Okay. That's how much in dollars. Okay. Let him say it. They have it there. It says 462. So, so do it. Tell us. You have it in dollars there from your report. Tell us. The, for the premier jet, $605,000. No, no, I'm taking it per, per, per helicopter. Okay, 605. $605,000. Yeah. If you multiply it by 463.50 Kobo, it will give you 280 million, 417 Naira, 500 Naira. 
That is the first one. Then the second one is $595,000. If you multiply it by 463.50 Kobo, it will give you 275 million 782,500 Naira. Then the total will now give you 556 million 200,000 Naira only. And that was what we limited to the consolidated revenue point. And it is in accordance with the extant treasury circular, which requires that this revenue line item should be 100% remitted to the consolidated revenue point. And that was what the college did. All right. The needs to start helicopter flight training. The major trainer is the helicopter. And then when the college decided to start this helicopter flight training, there are two sets of helicopter that the college needs to buy. The college needs to buy the piston helicopter and also needs to buy the uh, jet helicopter, the transition trainer. So just the next question was that, Yes. yes. I just want to take you up on this. Yes. The helicopter you bought, the Bell 206 yes. L4. Yes. It's a single crew helicopter. It can't be used for training. It cannot. It cannot be used for training. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, the Bell 206 purchased by Inca is double crew. Any aircraft that we buy, even if it's a single crew aircraft, we duplicate the controls for training aircraft. So we have two people sitting side by side. That's how it is in our, all our airplane, because we are a training school. Uh, normally when we buy an aircraft, there is what we call the general configuration for the aircraft. For training, we add additional specifications and configuration. So any aircraft that you come to the college to see, you will find out that it's customized for training. Sir. Okay, please, thank you very much for this. Yes. Can you provide us the picture of your helicopter, that particular two No problem. Can you problem. bring it some other time? We'll want, provide it, sir. We'll okay, provide it, sir. Yeah. Then the second question. Uh, okay, I think we've taken that because you asked the Bell 206 L4 helicopter. Is it single crew or double crew? Just like we said, it's customized for training. In our training, you have the instructor and you have the student, all always together. Uh, how long was it used and how many hours? The helicopter, since we bought them, since they were delivered from 2012, to all we do with them is that we fly them to Abuja, do maintenance on them, and return them back. As at the time the helicopters were sold, I don't have the figures with me here, but they're just barely about 20 or 30 hours uh, for the helicopters. That's the usage that we have. Then uh, the next question was, uh, why do you want to transition from jet to piston? Normally for training, uh, what we do is that because we are doing up initial training, up initial training when you start, the student is supposed to get PPL. When we do up initial training, we use aircraft that don't go fast. That's, then we use piston aircraft. And then when we finish with that, because the type of planes that are used for you to fly are not those piston aircraft. So they're jet aircraft. So the moment you finish the training on the piston, we now use you to do jet transition. So we use the jet for the transition. So it's because the first helicopters that were supplied to us were the jet. And then we needed the other one, which was part of the plan. Government did not provide funding. That's why the solution to make it easier was dispose of those ones and get the piston helicopters. And then you also asked, what kind of helicopter do you want to buy? The helicopters that are um, best used for this training is that we either go for the Schweizer or we go for the Robinson. But the preferred will be the Robinson 44 and the Robinson 66. Those are the options that we have for those uh, up initial training. Then uh, the next question. Okay, what we did not put in the report, and then they say the choppers were bought for 
million and sold at 1.2. Uh, please, uh, for the total package for the contract was 7.4 million, which includes parts, which includes training, which includes all the associated works. The cost by each helicopter was 2.4 million dollars. As a then, each helicopter was worth 2.4 million dollars. 2.4 million dollars. Okay. Uh, okay, the, the next question you asked was that we give a report where other MDS requested for this chopper, but was sold in, I think we'll provide, uh, that is not part of the reports that we, we came in, we'll provide that report. The report is that uh, there were inspections of the helicopter by the Nigerian army, just like you said, and the, by the by the Navy, the, there were inspections of. They came, inspected the helicopters, and left. They never made any offer to the college. We will we'll provide the report of all those that indicated interest uh, that to acquire the helicopter, because we felt at the time the approval was granted was to do auction of the helicopter, and during the auction, we did not get any uh, representation or offer from them. Right. Okay, the BOSA has answered the issue of the funding, the payments, yes, and all that. BOSA has clarified on that. Then, did you get a valuation report that is duly certified? The federal government has its own processes and methods when it comes to valuation of plant or any other thing that is for disposal. They authorize people to value aircraft, value vehicles, Faro all that is the Ministry of Works, the mechanical division. So that report is what is required of us as public servants when we need to auction or as reserve disposal values. That has always been in the federal service. There is no requirement for us in the federal service that we'll go and get uh, from uh, current, I think those people there are current certified or whatever because it's mechanical uh, department that handles those things. There is no requirement for us to get from uh, Valua or whatever to sign documents for vehicles and for aircraft. That's the processes. And all the ones that have been done before is like that. You get those reports, they'll tell you, if you write to the ministry, ministry will tell you go to Ministry of Works, you get that valuation from Ministry of Works for aircraft, for vehicles, that is all. Another aircraft, what was the cost of purchase? Yes. They will send you to go there and get valuation. Why? having a recourse to section 57 of the Procurement Act where you need to engage the services of a valuer or a professional in that area. I think that's what the provision of that section says. Why must you go to the Federal Ministry of Works? Why did you engage the services of this valuer in accordance with the provisions of section 57, part 8, part 10 of the Procurement Act? Why you said you should require the, the, the professional service of a valuer, independent valuer, or a professional in that area. That's what the section say. I can't remember the rest of the narrative, but that's the... So I don't know why you have to be, they say works, and then did the works give you this uh, valuer? What the reserve values for the helicopters should be. For the engagement, the auctioneer, his own function is just to do auction. I, I think head of procurement will answer the question on that. I don't... If you have the act, find it. Section 57. Google it. Section 57. I'm very, very conversant of that act. Right from section 55 down is all the procedures of disposing public assets. It didn't say uh, 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 um, evaluer. It said, um, it didn't say auctioneer. It said independent valuer. Independent evaluator. If I can correct it, get the word. And uh, in, in addition, where's that report from the Institute of uh, Certified Institute of Auctioneers. 
of Nigeria. We have a report here. We need to be serious with this uh, hearing, Mr. Chairman. Yes. We need to be serious. This, these are the people to certify any auctioneer in Nigeria that will carry any activity whatsoever, any business with government, either ministry, parastatal or agency. He must be a certified auctioneer. The person you used, we got a letter from this institute. He is not a member. He has no certificate. He is not certified by them. So why must you use this auctioneer? You need to respond to this, please. We have a letter from them which will give you a copy. This is a serious problem even here to start with. You understand? Even if you have to use an auctioneer, should be a certified auctioneer by government agency. This man, he has no record with them. He is not an auctioneer. He has not been certified by the institute. So why must you use it? Uh, Director Procurement, where did you get this man? You have to respond to this uh, very important uh, 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 reply that we got from the institute before we go further. Because already we are building this uh, investigative hearing on a, uh, on a very shaky foundation on a very shaky foundation, we will not take report from that your auctioneer that you use. We are not taking report from him. So you will have to know that any report coming from him is as good as is, it is invalid. That means you have connived, either connived, or you have a hidden agenda for using somebody that is not certified by this institute. Then to the, uh, to the head of uh, accounts, I'm coming back to you, please, on the issue that we asked you earlier. We ask you how much did they pay into the uh, Federation account, and you gave us a response. So we have additional questions for you to make clarification now. Uh, you said during that period, they are, the ex official exchange rate was 400 and, and, uh, 463, am I right? As at that date. But after making our findings now, we discovered that the official rate as at that period of payment was 763.17. So the payment they made was far shorter, was far, sh in fact, the margin was too much. They are supposed to, which we are going to confirm with you. We either write the CBN for them to reply us as at that date, how much was the official rate, official rate, for the value of the money. So from what we got, what they're supposed to pay, it's uh, 461,761,000, and one, seven, naira. That's for one, that's for uh, premium jet service. And for Blue Home, they are to pay 400, uh, 454,806,150 naira. That's for Blue Home. But as against the payment of 200, let me have that document. Please. As against this payment of uh, Premier Jet Services Limited, 280 million. Four one seven six six one thousand for Blue Horn Aviation. They paid two hundred and seventy-five million seven eight two six six one. That was the payment made. So we want you to be sure of what you are telling us here because we are writing the CBN for us to reconcile this huge gap of over five hundred million. Please, thank you. Sorry, that uh, the blue that wrote that company, the company that's we have found that, we have found out from CAC that they are not they don't exist. Yes, CAC said CAC said that company do not exist. So what you do for us is that we need the we need the we need this the certificate number, the certificate of corporation number of Blue Horn. Uh, Director of Procurement, we need all the documents submitted by the two companies. Not only the two companies, including those that bid it. 
all the companies that bid it for this process. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. No, it can't just be two companies. Either they reserve it or not, there must be competitors, even within. They can, you can ask the winner to bring to, to three companies. I'm sure that was what happened if it is reserved. So we need those companies that were submitted to you, all the companies that participated in the process. Okay, all their CAC documents, their certified documents to go into the bidding it's from August. that period till date. Thank yes, you. Thank you, sir. One moment, please. On to director of procurement, yes. certain things, and he's been looking up and down, looking for those things. Um, let me read section 56 of the Public Procurement Act to you. Section 56, subsection 1, says that before slating any public property for disposal, the accounting officer whether acting in his own authority or at the direction of any superior or other authority in charge of any public property set for disposal, shall, the operative word is shall, shall authorize the preparation of evaluation report for such property by an independent Evaluator, independent, not Ministry of Works, or such professional with appropriate competence to carry out the evaluation. Now, consequent upon that, we will want you to furnish us the committee that valuation report by that professional. And if that is not done, there is sanction for you. I want to inform you that this might cost you a lot. And you know the consequence. The consequence is there. Yes. Of non-compliance. Yes. The bossa I'm surprised that as a person entrusted with the responsibility of keeping, making sure that Nigeria gets adequate value for their assets, you are the one now helping them to work to the answer. Work to the answer in the sense that you just give us a figure that we just add up to the amount paid into the treasury. I'm sure that if you have opened your phone and look at the exchange rate as at June 2023, when the money was paid to the treasury, you will have gotten the right answer given by my deputy here. But rather, because your office, I suspect your office has been compromised. That's why you just gave us that figure so that it will rhyme with the amount paid to the treasury. And in any case, if indeed you paid the total sum of money of sale, where did you get the money to pay as commission for your auctioneer? If you paid the total money, where did you get the money to pay? And how much? We will come to that, to you. But I want the director of procurement to continue. Director. As uh, it was rightly, this immediately we received the. Did you put the boss on oath? Was he on oath? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
that was asked by the honorable member. Uh, we'll make sure that we provide all these reports, inshallah, uh, to the honorable members. We'll make that provision. We'll make that provision. Yes, sir. We are going to provide all these informations, inshallah. Yes, sir. Um, uh, yes, uh, we get back to Zaria. The, you can see that the team that was involved will ask for detailed information to bring to you, sir, to the committee. We, we asked for the fake approval. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you said it was included in your submission. But we found that page to be blank. Did you obtain a fake approval? Did you indeed obtain a fake approval to sell those helicopters? Rector, please. Okay. The procurement is a place to ask. What Apple was that? I'm sorry, since I took over, this thing was done a long time ago. I was no, it was done in 2023. Yes, I wasn't uh, You are not there, yes. I wasn't there, yes. I was not involved. That is the basic problem I have. There were you, before you were appointed, where were you? Before I you were appointed, you were rec deputy rector. So you were in that organization? You didn't know about it. And the only thing I knew was that the when the Nigeria Army uh, the stress uh, revolution you when the Nigeria Army Aviation came. He said he was deputy. Yes. Nigeria Army Aviation came. This helicopter issue came from the ministry. When the Nigeria Army Aviation came, I was there. On this they came for the helicopter issue. Even the Air Force, the police, they were... Were you part of the committee that said they should say? No, sir. After they, they came to ask for... to buy. Who took the decision to say? If you, are, you as deputy, you are no, not involved. They, they, Who? They, that was the privilege of the former chief executive and the... Ministry, I was it uh, involved. Okay. Please, I have this is, uh, Honorable Professor Paul Sunday Namchi. I represent the people of uh, Enugu East, East of Federal Constituency. I'm from Enugu State. Uh, Procurement Officer, I do understand you know the mean of burden. I do understand you know the mean of burden in procurement. And while while you understand that, you just mentioned, uh, the deputy, former deputy just mentioned a lot of things, that even the police came to buy it, and other people came for it. I thought, when things are unusable and put for auction, when there's no other government offices that can use it, before you start bothering. Because this thing has just bothered without due, every due process, we are by The process of bothering, involved probably that you have to go back and check if there's any other place it's going to be used before it's being sold to external body. And they're just saying that these people come, these people came to buy and you decided to move, move it out of the out from it. As if it's unusable. I think you do understand who bought and whether you say you're not there, if your signature is there or not, you are there. My other colleagues have also mentioned about the appointment of Shoni. And you know very well the consequences of not abiding to the financial rules. You yes. Yeah, you know the consequences, don't you? Control. Your yeah, quality control. It's you I'm directing my question at. I know you know so much about uh, the aircraft. And uh, you know about the blue book of aircraft. 
which will have given you the best evaluation you want for your aircraft. And I can tell you for that particular aircraft, if it's specially made, it could have cost you that 2.4 million. Assuming it cost you 2.4 million. As at 2021, that same aircraft with less than 24 hours operations is still costing about one per piece. It's still costing about 1.7, 1.8 million. And you sold the same aircraft for 559 and 605,000? I know you know all this. Search your mind. If you are telling me somebody give you evaluation on an aircraft who is not a professional, either an uh, aviator, how will he be able to tell you that this is how much the aircraft is going to cost? You have, yes, you have a way of checking without necessarily referring to any evaluator. And you know what the cost of the aircraft should be. So I can tell you this. I'm just putting it across to you. You know the valuation of the aircraft. And if you have sold it for that amount, it's criminal. I'm sorry to tell you this. We are Nigerians, please. Said by the deputy. But, but, but one, on the issue of the bidding, um, we need to know the criteria used. The criteria used in coming up with these two bidders. The, like I said, the deputy chair has said it all on the issue of bidding, but we need to know the criteria used in coming up with two bidders. Thank you very much. To this kind of people we are facing, and they didn't give any answer. Can we continue just giving them a reason without intervening or without answering our distinct or are we going to give them time to go and come with a polished document with concrete reasons that they can defend themselves if not i don't see that we are giving them so many reasons their answer they kept quiet we are representing nigerians each and every water city member we are representing and to protect it with this kind of money, every human being, money you can see that you, you sold this kind of helicopter, 280, not be 2023, even 2020, we have so many vehicles that. Entire mm -hmm. arrangements. I call it an arrangement because I believe that this thing was premeditated. premeditated. You sat down, plotted, and then executed, and thought you would go scot-free. But we are here to show you that, look, we are not in a banana republic. And again, we have asked questions. We have made inquiries. We have even more or less pleaded to you to come and say, this and this and give it as it is black and white but you decide to stay numb to stay mum not to respond adequately rather it's just fables in which you are given please please the people of nigeria have suffered enough we cannot continue to go round robin on this situation. So let us do the needful. Mr. Chairman, I want to appreciate you so much for making sure that we follow up on this case. Because it is necessary for us to bring answers to the people of Nigeria. Thank you. After the purchase, the money was credited to the TSA. Is it 100% crediting TSA? Yes, the, the total money credited with TSA. Yes, Which money did you use to pay the valuer? Yes, sir. And the auctioneer? Yes, sir. What happened was that man was not aware that uh, there's going to be a 10% commission for the valuer. It was much later, I think sometime in August or thereabout, that uh, a request was sent to us for us to pay 10% valuation. And at that time, we have already paid the entire amount
to the CRM. And uh, in the college, monthly, we do make monthly remittances of our of the of fifty percent remittance to CRM. So in subsequent month, I think either September or October, we now deduct that ten percent in our monthly remittance to CRM for us to balance what we paid as ten percent commission. That was what happened. So the first time in the history of that uh, NCAT, was that the first time government properties were boarded? I was. That was the first time. Yes. So you are not aware of uh, these charges, uh, right? So how did we arrive at 10%? The award letter is very explicit on that 1.5%. It was indicated clearly in line four of the award letter. I can't remember mentioning 10%. He said 10%. It might be an error. It might be an error, but uh, actually, the payment details, all transactions related to the disposal of that aircraft, of that uh, jet, either helicopter, all the transactions either commission paid to agents, either percentage paid to the auctioneer or the valuer, the dates for the payment, and other details. We need all those information. And you know what it means? Please, it is not your company. Supply us with all that you have all that you have concerning that transaction. And also the award letters given to the uh, auctioneer. The award letter that was given to the auctioneer from your organization for him to carry out that exercise. Earlier we said the auctioneer was not a, a registered auctioneer. So we also need information about uh, how you got about getting the auctioneer. Since this, who recommended him, since he's not a, a registered auctioneer. So we need all his details as well, of his company and everything, and his registered certificate with the institute, certified institute. We need all his documents, his certificate of uh, uh, clearance and his seal. Please, we need all those documents from you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, my Things that have been mentioned before. Um, do a letter to the CBA, the Governor of Central Bank, requesting for the official exchange rate as at June 2023. Do a letter of invitation and send it to NCAT to invite the auctioneer for the next sitting. And that, that auctioneer should come with his license. All documents relating to this transaction. Do another letter to invite um, the representative of the Chartered Auctioneers Association to be present for the next meeting. Certified Institute of Auctioneers. The bosses to give us payment details 
to agents and all other payments made with respect to this transaction and approval for those payments. Director to provide us with the fake approval that allowed them, because up to date they have not provided that, fake approval that allowed them to sell those two helicopters. The director of procurement to respond in writing on compliance with section fifty six one of the Procurement Act on the issue of having an independent value. And if he did not do so, why? He did not comply with the law. Do a letter to the registrar of Corporate Affairs Commission. Clerk to do a letter to the Registrar of Corporate Affairs Commission to give us the full details of the existence of the company that bought those helicopters. Because there are some companies that just exist on paper. According to CAC, they told us that that company does not even exist on their register, on their register again. So we want a confirmation of that statement and their representative to be present. The representative of the Corporate Affairs Commission. Director to bring the representatives of the company that bought that company, that bought our helicopters, the MD of that company. the company that bought, they are to come with their certificate of incorporation, their returns to the Corporate Affairs Commission up to end of 2023 to show that they have been paying taxes and they have been making annual returns to the Corporate Affairs Commission. They have to come with all those evidence. Deputy, if you have missed out anything, please remind me. After this one, uh -huh. maybe we'll bring in the FCC and ICPC to be at this sitting. If we have, if I've captured everything, the, the helicopter data, the rector to provide the helicopter data. Hold 
They call it the flu book, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Mm. What we have come to discuss today, can we, if we agree that we have exhausted everything for today, can we have a motion for an adjournment from one of our colleagues, sir? Having one, one moment, I'm the office of the clerk of the committee, not later than Thursday next week. What's that date? Thursday next week should be hmm? 22nd of February. All documents to be submitted, not later than 22nd. Those documents that you are submitting. Every page must be signed, and those that need to be certified should be certified. So, we ask for the motion to adjourn. After all what we have in place has been digested, I want to use this opportunity being given to me by the chair to ask for this meeting should be, uh, should I say, uh, Jafar Muhammad Shatima Mbargu is my name. I represent Mbargu Agora Fira Constituents of Niger State. I want this meeting to be uh, standardized, are you? Yes. To be adjoined, standardized. Uh, Yeah. Uh -huh.